Hello everyone, what's up? It's Zero here, and today I'll be starting a new series called How to Make an RPG Game Using Eversign's RPG Kit. So, instead of showing in detail how to script every aspect of an RPG, at the moment I've decided to go with instead showing how to use Eversign's Advanced RPG Kit to make an RPG. So, you can make one without needing to do any sort of scripting or any of that. And I can just focus on showing you how to use the kit, building, editing, importing custom swords, armors, all that good stuff. And we'll, in this series, be going through making an entire RPG game. So, you may have seen my other series, which was an RPG development time lapse. In that one, I won't be doing any sort of voiceovers or walkthroughs. It'll instead just be me watching me develop an RPG, whereas this one I'll be teaching you how to. So the first thing you're going to need to do is open up your toolbox, go to your marketplace, models, and search for Everscience RPG Kit. That should bring it up. Yep. <coughs> then you're going to want to pick, oh, that didn't bring it up. Just search for uh, RPG Kit. See if that loads it up. Yep, right here you pick the one by Everscience. 1 million sales ever signs advanced RPG kit. You don't want to click on this to load it up. And now you'll have this. Once you have this, you'll be able to open this folder in your explorer. And you'll have these models that say ungroup and then a section. So, <coughs> excuse me. You're going to want to bring each model to their correct section. So for example, game.chat, you're going to want to bring that to the chat, ungroup it, game.workspace, drag this into workspace and ungroup it. By the way, it is control and U at the same time to ungroup, or you can right click and select ungroup. Group game.lighting, game.starter pack, game.starter GUI. Uh, game dot server script service and then ungroup game dot replicated storage and there you go so once we're here you can delete the camera and all this stuff in this help slash guide you can see <coughs> this will give you a quick like walk through of how to do some basic stuff, put the models in each section. We just did that instead of using some basic values a number value, string, an object value. <coughs> There's not really much to do on that. We'll learn this stuff as we go through mostly. So now I can close up with that. Version change log, featured RPGs if you want to go look at some RPGs you made. By that I know this guy he doesn't really update this anymore I'm really good friends with this per dude I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description where he's currently doing a RPG development time-lapse series also I don't think science adding any more um, what is it RPGs to this featured RPGs list kit extensions if you want to get some upsized mobs you can go to this link and download it which we might do soon so that's all of that stuff now we'll take a look at each of the separate parts so the sword shop is pretty self-explanatory it's what the players will use to purchase swords in the game <coughs> we'll be able to edit the sword shop and add our own swords and stuff soon sword pawn is where the players can sell their weapons for gold you can use this if you want to I will show how to use it in the tutorial just to make sure it's a complete tutorial although I usually do not add them in my own RPG games armor this will will use these for the player to step on the pad and equip their armor and gain health healing fountain will just heal the player if they step into it then this is an admin door in case you want a room that like only you and your friends or you and your admins can get into. 
level door. This is how you make it so that only certain levels can access different areas. <coughs> Our portal. This will teleport people if they are a high enough level to access the portal. And then, of course, our basic mob. You can see all of these are sorted into different folders just to keep things organized. I suggest you try and keep everything organized the same way. Just that it's easy to find stuff and you don't have any difficulties in that situation. Now, oh crap. You're not gonna, I'm gonna click play just to demonstrate that stuff won't actually be working right now because there's one other thing we have to do first if you see can't swing my sword or anything you're gonna have to go into one moment uh, game settings avatar avatar type 2 r6 and click save proceed this one check something if it Presets. This is interesting. I have to check this out one day. I haven't have, I ever seen that before. That's cool. Uh, what I suggest to do, just to make your game look a bit nicer, what I always do, since I just added the new technology, lighting technology, go to lighting, technology, and change this to shadow map. <coughs> As you can see, this will add some realistic shadows to all your models, and it makes it look much, much nicer once we get our map going and stuff. So, now that I have the game actually set to R6, click play, we should actually be able to fight the mob, gain XP and gold, level up. Although, one mob in no map is obviously not a completed RPG, so we're going to have to actually start working on stuff. As you can see, the mob follows you, you can hit it, all that good stuff. So now that we've got the kit set up, I'm going to show you how to configure swords and configure the mobs. First thing we'll do is configure the sword. So if you go to the swords tool, <coughs> excuse me, I have a bad cough right now, go to the sword and go to this weapon config module script you can edit the sword's maximum damage minimum damage cooldown and how much it'll cost in the store to buy so let's just say this can, sword can do like two to three damage yeah we'll say that cooldown one second humanoid to kill enemy all right this could be say you wanted that certain pvp swords you could change this to humanoid and then it'd be able to kill players but not enemies. So this actual scripts in the weapons, I suggest that unless you know what you're doing, you do not touch this. Even if you know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't edit this unless you want to do some sort of like advanced mod like configurations to your sword. <coughs> so say we want to duplicate this one and make an iron sword. And rename it change the damage to like three to five say we make it cost like a hundred gold to buy in the store and then say we go to the handle we can change the color to the color to like an irony color I will have that so now if we click play you'll be able to see our two different sword models and see the different damages that they're doing. So as you can see we've got our iron sword now and our bronze sword. Bronze sword will do two to three damage. Iron sword will do three to four. I mean three to five. Three to four five damage. Killed the mob XP went up. This kit is really like simple and easy to use. It's great for getting your first RPG, your first game up and going. I used it a lot when I started out developing and I didn't know about programming or anything. So now to edit the uh, mobs, we're gonna wanna, we'll keep, we'll change the grass mobs health since um, 
<coughs> as you can see, its health is really high right now. So, if you go into a mob and open up its mob config module script, same as we did for the sword, you can see all these different attributes in the mob. So, name. This is where we can change the name of the monster. Be creative about our name. So say instead of grass monsters for our first thing, we wanted bandits. We could do this. Let's say I set this all to like plastic. Or say I took like the torso and the legs and then made that slate or not slay a fabric then colored the head of the arms like that I went into my <coughs> mob config we can rename him to like bandit mob level it doesn't actually change anything it's just let's show like what recommended level to kill this is where we can change the awarded XP in gold the amount of health the mob has so say I want to drop this down to like 10 for this mob, their walk speed, the amount of damage the mob does, and the amount of time it takes them to respawn, how far away you need to be for the mob to detect you and start chasing, so like how long till the mob updates your location. This you probably shouldn't change unless you want a mob that can like a boss that can detect you throughout an entire like 100 stud boss room. So say you had, this is where you can select if the mob drops a weapon. When you kill, there's no like chance to drop, so it's only will or will not drop. I suggest if you're making a boss, you set this to true, true and then set the name of your weapon here. <coughs> then when you kill this bot mob, the sword will be dropped. Is ranked, so say we wanted like bosses or mini bosses or something like that. We can select true, then the name of the rank then this mob teleport so say we wanted like a boss in a dungeon then once you kill this boss your teleport to spawn we could set this to true then put the c frame location of the spawn here that's all the configurations inside of the mob the actual name inside a workspace won't change however unless you go inside of this en enemy humanoid billboard gui text label and then actually like change it inside of studio I usually do that just so that it looks nicer it's kind of pointless though because it'll automatically update once you load into the game <coughs> so now once we load in so of having that grass monster with 14 health we'll have this guy bandit level 1 10 health yep and there we go So this part is mainly going to be me covering the um, configurations and all that stuff so like mob configs, weapon configs and then in the second part I'm probably going to start building the first map and setting up our sword shop, getting some weapons, maybe get the first boss made. So now I'll show you how to config armor. So say this is our iron armor for level fours let's say we wanted like a weaker armor for level two plus that's called our bronze armor so say we can get a bronze color to recolor this bronze now if we go up here to where we can rename this bronze holder say we want this to be like level two plus 30 health change the name now if we open up the armor model and go down to armor config, we can change the added health, 30, the level required. Then if you want it to boost the player's walk speed, which for like high level armors we will, we can add the number there. So now this guy will be equipable for anyone that's level 2 plus. So say I just click play, oh. one minute, I will. I'm gonna stop this again and just um, quickly change it to level 1 just so I can demonstrate 
the armor equipping. So yeah, I went in here and changed level required to 1 and then clicked play. I'll change it back to 2 after, I'm just changing it to 1 quickly to show the, the armor being equipped and that it works. So say we come over here, say we were like killing this guy and we were to level up and become a high enough level for the armor. Come over here, step on the pad, we have the armor, our health goes up, and yeah. This teleport to spawn area button, this will teleport you to a uh, set location that we, can, that we can edit, which I'll show you how to edit next. And we're going to have to edit this like bar up here that talks about the RPG. So we've covered configuring swords, configuring our mobs, and configuring our armors. Now let's talk about how we can set those settings I was just showing you. Uh, if you go into, let me try and find where this is really quickly. Um, uh, oh, replicated storage, then go to our game config module script. You can find our game title, which right here is where you're going to want to put the title of your game. I named mine Helios RPG, so we can put that in here, the version of the game, 1.0, and then like the circuit, so like pre-alpha, alpha, beta, pre-release, release. Ours is obviously in a pre-alpha state, so we're gonna put that in. Now we can put, if it auto saves, when a manual save, if they type like colon save in the chat, if it works, I'm gonna disable that. Save every five minutes, save on exit, yep. Game UI. Oh, this isn't like done though. Uh, max level, right now I'm just gonna set my max level to like, I don't know, 50 for now. We'll raise it as we add new content. UI color, the highlighted color of the GUIs. We'll just leave that as white. But yes, yeah, so that's how you can configure that. So now if we click play, sorry if this part's a bit boring, part two will be much more interesting because instead of just configurating everything, we'll actually be going in and building maps and starting the full development. As you can see now at the top, we have Helios RPG version 1.00 pre-alpha instead of what we had before. <coughs> Alright, so now we have that configured. I think that's pretty much everything for this part, or I'll show how to change the level doors really quickly. Say we bring a level door over here. You can name your level doors in specific, that's what I like to do. So like, say we name this, uh, I'll just change it later. If you go to your level door config, you can change the required levels, you say I set it to 1, and then named it cave. Once again, if you want the change to actually show up in studio, you have to go into the GUI itself. So say I did like cave level 1, and then I clicked play. Even though the door is there and you can see it, you'll only be able to go through it if you're the required level or higher than the required level. So, let's test this. Yep, we go right through the door. Hopefully the mobs could try and attack us when we go through. But, yeah, you can step right through the door. Come over here, equip our armor with our sword. This healing fountain, it works for sure. Like, let's just, just show that off. See, I'm getting damaged, jumping the healing fountain. Turns red and heals me. Then it shows the cooldown on it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for part one on how to configure the RPG kit. In part two, we'll look into um, building the first map, setting up a few different types of enemies, or setting up our first bot, and configuring the sword shop and some armors. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. 
Uh, net part two should be coming out in a few days from now, and I'll see you all then.